Hey, YouTubers and RV fans. So I was just invited into Mike and Dawn's beautiful rig. Hi, Mike. Hey, how hey, are Dawn. you? How are you, YouTube? Hi. These guys are in Margaritaville. That's the name of the rig, and they call her Margie. 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 <laughs> so they've been really nice, and they're going to give us a tour of Margie today. Hi, baby. Aren't you just the sweetest thing? Yes, you are. So I'm with Mike and Don today, and Mike and Don have graciously agreed to do an interview with us about their full-time life. So I guess the first question I have for both of you is what inspired you to, you know, sell everything, you know, go mobile with your work, Mike, retire from your work, Don, and hit the road in this amazing RV. Let me take this. Go for it. Okay. So first off, we both uh, we both work at home. <coughs> uh, I work for a major telecommunications company, and Don worked for a major hospital in Jacksonville. And since we both were home commute, or you know, remote teleworkers, um, I I thought that we could extend this into the uh, the mobile lifestyle, and. Um, the only thing is, is that my company was a little bit more uh, willing to embrace that. Dawn's not so much. <laughs> so we, three years ago, we kind of put this plan into motion where we could um, um, wait for Dawn to retire early, and we did. And that happened last, what, two weeks ago? Last two weeks ago? And we started our, our journey out. It, it was a three-year plan. Um, yeah first thing that we did was, you know, started looking about how are we going to get rid of stuff and what are we going to do with our stuff and are we going to sell it, are we going to donate it, and we wound up doing everything. So so take me through the three years because a lot of a lot of RVers or a lot of people who aspire to be RVers don't know where to start. Where did you guys start? How, I mean, three years ago, that's a long period of time from the point of concept to operation. Where you actually are move, you're living full time in your RV. So, what was the first stage? How did you, how did you really define for yourself how to begin this whole process? We started researching every way that we could. YouTube, people like you, and so many others, and watching their experience, how they started out, the different things that they were going through. What did you learn from them? That it was going to be a process, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. And that something can always go wrong. <laughs> now, did you have a big house? Yes, we did. You yeah. had a four bedroom, two bath, two car garage. And it was full of stuff, wasn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah it was. <laughs> yes, it was. We each had, you know, hobbies, things that we collected. I had all this antique china. He had music instruments and, you know, just... There was just so much to get rid of. <laughs> and how did you begin? What did you do? Um, started giving it mainly to the kids. Um, what they wanted, they could take. And um, gave stuff to my nieces and nephews. And thought, okay, well, they won't have to go through this when we're dead. We'll be able to <laughs> do it now. Yeah. You know, I've heard that before. <laughs> I've heard other RVers say she the just same laid thing. Down and moved your table. Oh, she did. <laughs> I got to show you guys this. We're in the doing the interview, and this is the dog. She's like, oh, I'm just laying here listening. That's Lexi. Lexi's a so, dog. So, yeah, a lot of a lot of RVers have said that, <laughs> especially older RVers. Say, well, we've gone through all this stuff, so don't have to worry about going through it when we're dead. So, okay, so you start your process of downsizing, which probably took you the, the, the entire three years. Mm -hmm. yes. We started three years, in, you know, into it. Two and a half. I got. I don't want to say we got serious because we kind of took a, a very relaxed clip. Things that I thought I was going to have a, a tough time getting rid of were the things that I tackled first, the things that I thought would take the longest. Um, I was a musician for a long time. Well, I guess I still am a musician, but I'm between instruments, right? But I had a, I had a bunch of instruments that I had to get rid of, so I started working on them. I had other uh, sound equipment. I worked on it, and then and and. Eventually, it all it all started to go, and we were started to uh, to get rid of our get rid of our stuff, and then it, then it came down to the the memorabilia stuff, you know, and 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 like the things that I decided I was committed to getting rid of everything, so we wouldn't have a storage bill. Mm -hmm. Didn't want it. However, when push came to shove, we realized that there were things that I just could not get rid of. Like, and it wasn't things; it was it was 
birthday cards from my from my girls, you know. Couldn't important get, important memorabilia. Could not get rid of that. So um, I paired that in things that that really meant something to me. So we we, we have a one year plan to go back and clean out the storage unit and kind of see if we can pare down any more or you know find other ways of saving it like digitally or or something like mm -hmm. that. But we we just couldn't do it at this. So point. The downsizing now. really never ends, which is interesting because a lot of people have said that. But even when they get into their RV, they continue to downsize. Stuff that's in storage, stuff that's in the RV. Right. Is that the same thing you're mm -hmm. talking about? Yes, because once we even got moved into the RV and we were kind of figuring, well, this isn't really going to fit or are we really going to use this? And so even after we got in, we were still taking stuff out. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. so take, me to the, take me through the process of selecting the RV. You know, what now, Mike, did you have a whole lot of experience with recreational vehicles? You said at one point that you were a big camper. Yeah, you know. I, I had I had two travel trailers. I had a uh, uh, two fifth wheels. And we had before we bought this unit, uh, we had uh, a 43 foot uh, fifth wheel, a toy hauler. So you were you were experienced with selecting an RV. Yeah, we, we've been RV through we should have been. probably. Yeah. <laughs> So did you find it difficult to find an RV that would meet your needs? We we talked about it when, when we first got this wild, crazy idea of, of hitting the road and that we could, we, when the realization happened that we could actually do it, um, then we thought, okay, the toy hauler was nice, but the toy hauler that we had, the kitchen was not sized properly to do, to, to live in. It was a nice, small kitchen, but... And the rest of it was, was luxurious, but the kitchen was too small. We had not enough cabinet space at all. Um, so we decided that between the, the things that he didn't have and the fact that we thought it would be really nice to, to be in an actual drivable motorhome, and that way we have everything right behind us. We can turn around and, and there's, there's your facilities, there's your, your kitchen table, there's your sofa. It's all right there, right? If you want to mm -hmm. pop open the fridge and grab a bottle of water going down the road, it's right there. Right there. Make me a sandwich. <laughs> right here. Well, something you just said that resonated with me a little bit, and that's when you said, when we finally felt like this was, this was something we could do, I need to know what that means because a lot of people are in that stage. They're thinking, is this something I can do? How did you come to the determination, the two of you, that this was something that was practical for you because you're not retired, you're still working, you're retired, you're young RVers. So what was the deciding factor? What made it real? We live in Jacksonville, Florida. One of the trips that I made back to my home area, the uh, in, in the Indiana Dune State Park, it would took me back to my childhood and I looked around the place and I thought, you know how cool is this? This is this is gorgeous. I love this place. And I thought, it would be really cool if I could spend my summers up in Indiana, near my hometown, and spend the winters down in Florida where we were living. Okay, so that, <laughs> that, well yeah, your typical snowbird. And right. I thought, and I thought well, we could do that in our fifth wheel. And then we got, you know, and I, then I, I, I thought, there's no way she's going to go for it. I said, <laughs> there's no way she's going to go <laughs> for it. Exactly. I, I, you know, he had all these crazy yeah. ideas, like, hmm, Dawn's just not going to go for that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I asked her, I said, you know, I said, would you, I, would you entertain moving into a, a, a RV and, and doing this, this whole thing mobile? And were you shocked with that or were you like? Not really, because I kind of had similar thoughts too. And mm -hmm. it just, I just kind of knew it wouldn't, wasn't going to be possible with my job that, uh, you know, I wouldn't be able to move that much. Um, so I kind of really didn't give it much credence at that point. And at that time, how many years did you have left before you could retire? I had three more years so before I would be eligible. So that, that's when the three-year mm -hmm. plan started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when she said, yeah, I'd consider doing that, buddy, I struck on the arm that's of right. God. Yeah, right? <laughs> okay, I've got your commitment now. <laughs> so, so it's like right away, I started looking at motorhomes because we knew, we, we knew that the, the fifth wheel wasn't going to work for a full-time living. It was great for weekend camping, um, but it wasn't going to work full-time. So then the deciding factor was really... Dawn. Oh, of course. She was, it was it, when she was on I'm board. Married. Right, you're married. So when she was on board, it was all a matter then of, of semantics. It was all a matter of aligning everything. It was all, for you, it was a matter of work. So I'm curious. Ooh. 
Are, at, at what point did you think this was going to work for you with your job? Well, since I, A, work for a telecommunications company that provides cellular service, um, I knew I technically had the capability of doing this, right? Um, and then, so I asked my boss, I said, boss, is this something that, that I could pull off and that you would allow me to do? And, and the boss said, well, you're a virtual employee. It doesn't matter where you work in the world. You could work anywhere in the world, and as long as you get the work done, that's all that matters. So that's great. I got the boss's yeah, approval. No, you told me that you've watched RV Love, and um, you know he works virtually from the road. And he said that he kept it quiet for the first year, just to prove that it could be done, and nobody would know any different. I would say I would say a, a, a core group of people where I work know. And have you found any resistance? I found. Um, I well, okay. I found a little bit with some people. Maybe they didn't quite get the concept. But then I thought, okay, they weren't too keen on it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, the RV love approach and not tell them. The end result, I'm getting the work done. Awesome. And how do you feel about it? I mean, this has been truly your first week, you know, traveling, and so we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But how did the first week on the road go? I can honestly say that, well, the first week on the road or the first week working? The first the week working on the road. Okay, so it was uneventful. It was just like I was sitting in my, my house in Jacksonville, other than the fact that I've been more more focused on, on the job. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's let's go back for a moment, because Don, I'm going to get to you on this whole thing, too, because now that you're retired, I'm going to be curious as to what you're doing. Uh, I know you have a really popular blog, so um, we're going to talk about that in a minute. So let's go back to the RV. So at what point did you make the selection of the Tuscany? Because this is a beautiful RV. Well, um, Don's brother had a Tuscany, and he absolutely loved it, and I thought it was a, a gorgeous rig. I thought it was a very impressive rig. And when we, we actually, we kind of started, we started broadening our search. We were do, looking on the internet. Uh, we saw a brand new Tuscany down in St. Augustine and it was a little bit outside of our budget and <laughs> oh, well okay yeah, yeah it was a lot outside, a lot of, outside of our budget right <laughs> and so then the next day it was sunday and we decided to drive up to savannah i mean who doesn't love a drive to savannah <laughs> so we right. pulled into the camping world up there and we saw a one-year-old tuscany that was being traded in the day that we pulled in there to look at other rigs no kidding and it was uh nearly the same the same floor plan just one year different and all of that depreciation was kind of taken care of by the previous owner, and it was a no-brainer for us. And that was when you found this one. Mm -hmm. that's, the, the, that's, that's this very rig. That's the rig. We got to talk to the owner who, mm -hmm. who had it, and mm -hmm. he actually uh, was willing to talk to us and, and tell me the things that, that he experienced with it and the things that he liked and didn't like. And basically, it was a little bit too much rig for him. He was trading smaller and downsizing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was a little bit smaller than our fifth wheel, so I thought it was perfect. A lot of times RVers will get into a rig and they'll, they'll be in it for, you know, less than a year. And they'll be like, yeah, this is too much. I want something smaller, something that's, you know, less space, but I can, you know, I can work with that. Are you guys happy with it or will you be downsizing, upsizing? Do you, what's the future for you? I, I don't, go ahead. I think for right now, I like the size of it. Um, I know a lot of people will have problems experiencing getting campgrounds and stuff to stay in, but since we have to kind of be close cellularly, um, we'll probably be staying in campgrounds and things like that, at least for the first year until we get our feet wet and really figure out what's going on. But um, I, the living space is just fine for me right now. <laughs> e easy to clean. Yeah, exactly. That's what I love. Easy easier. to clean. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So, Dawn, let's talk about your blog. Oh, it's just something I started years and years ago just to kind of, I like to write a little bit, and so that's kind of what started. But since we've been doing this transition into the RV, I just kind of figured that I would focus on that and mm -hmm. kind of life in the RV after retirement and all of all of that stuff. There's so many other wonderful blogs out there, so kind of... I think you underestimate the... Um, <laughs> The, the power of your blog because your blog is beautifully written, very professional, oh, and it's www. Random bits of trial and error. Random bits of trial and error. Perfect. Mm -hmm. That's a perfect RV blog. 
I mean, really. It's just random bits of everything. Yeah, that's (laughs) wonderful. And uh, I'm happy to tell you guys that the paddy wagon is featured in one of her blog articles. (laughs) Just saying, if you want to go visit. It was wonderful to meet you. Because we see all these YouTube people that we follow and you feel like you know them so much and they have no clue who you are. (laughs) I know, right? It's, so it's, it's, just, it's kind of it's kind of surreal actually so it's just kind of nice to be able to tell you in person how much thank we you. appreciate all of the hard work that you do and and how you've inspired us and thank you very much that means a lot to me you know by your experience we learn and <laughs> thanks to all of them out there that it's just the it's li- invaluable information. absolutely the list is huge of all I mean, it is. we gathered bits and pieces from all of the of the, mm-hmm. the bloggers out there it's amazing how you know because I did the same thing you did when I started is I I spent hours watching YouTube videos. I would come home from work and I would literally just watch YouTube videos into the until I would go to bed. You yeah. know, because it was <laughs> it was fascinating that people were actually living this life and how they were doing it because some of them were doing it on a shoestring budget. budget. Yeah. Others were do, you know, others were very wealthy and, and and everybody in between. And it was a miracle because I thought to myself, you know, I'm not a wealthy guy, but I have a, I have the opportunity for a mobile life. I can do this. And just like you guys, you know, I mean, you really consider what it is that you want to do. So that's wonderful. What's the future hold for you guys in terms of your travel plans and, you know, family and all that kind of happy stuff? Well, this uh, this year, uh, this is our first week on the road. Uh, we we knew that you were here, and so we weren't stalking <laughs> you. <laughs> but but. Uh, you know, it's right on I-10, so we decided to make a stop here and 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 get my get my uh, my rhythm going for work in my remote office and make sure that's all going, make sure the rig's going good, and uh, the the next stop is we're going to spend a month in the Houston area, uh, and then we are going to head up and visit, spend a couple months with my parents in Austin. Oh, that's wonderful. We've got some friends on the way to Missouri that live in Dallas and in Oklahoma. And we'll spend probably a week at each of their places, uh, um, and looking forward to that. And then we're going to spend a month with our daughter up in uh, up in Springfield, Missouri. Wow! Yeah. Yeah, Springfield, Branson area. <laughs> Branson, yeah. After that, then we're probably going to go back uh, back into Jacksonville for our, our annual medical checkups and and <laughs> all of our uh, glasses and all that stuff. And then, yep. And then after that. Probably swing up to uh, Don's uh, uh, home area in Ohio, spend a couple months up there, and after that, who knows? It's wherever we want to, <laughs> wherever we want to go, wherever you want to park it. Yep, that's it. The freedom. I mean, that's mm-hmm. isn't that's, that exciting? And that's the thing. And is if we get somewhere and something's going on in Jacksonville that we need to get back for, we have the ability to do that and the flexibility. And that's really kind of cool. Amazing. So if you had um, some, if you had any kind of checklist or guidance or suggestions for people who are actively, actively thinking about um, downsizing to an RV life, what are maybe the top five things that you would tell them to do? For me, the first one is don't wait. If you have the means to do it or you think you have the means, is to do it. Get out there and do it. Get out and do it. I I would set a deadline and because we knew that three years was our deadline and we had to get everything done before then all of the researching everything had to be done and we knew that that was go date and so you're the methodical one and you're the dreamer (laughs) 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 i'm definitely not a planner i just kind of like to get an idea and say yeah Yeah. let's let's run with this let's go (laughs) yeah what are we waiting for in fact that's i kept telling her i'm waiting for you You the whole whole three years the whole three years we're planning waiting on you I'm just waiting on my top. <laughs> That's fine. I think what the else? other thing that I would say is that uh, the stuff that you currently have, you won't miss it when it's gone. She asked me uh, last night. She said, well, let me ask you, do you miss anything? <laughs> no, I don't. I, I don't miss anything. I don't yeah. I have everything that I need right here. And How does that make you feel? I have everything. I free. Listen to that. I have everything I need right here. Yeah. Your whole, your life is in this rig. It's so freeing. I mean, you spend your whole life doing what society wants you to do, work between these hours, and you want to be successful, you have to do this, and you have to have that, and when you not two cars in the garage, you have to have, you know, it's just... And debt. It's crazy. Debt, debt, yeah. and more debt. Exactly. Right. It's right. just, it's crazy. 
it's there's just so much we don't need it's and that I think that resonated with us and I'm not I'm not sorry it's all an adventure mm -hmm. the good the bad and the ugly it's all a part of the well adventure. guys I would encourage you to visit Dawn's blog <laughs> and I've been encouraging Mike to start his own YouTube channel so maybe one day Mike will have a YouTube channel that'll be RV focused and you can join them on their trips and adventures across this country so Mike and Don, thank you so much for the interview. Oh, thank you so much. Thank it's you. It's been a pleasure. We have it's been a pleasure meeting you, and, and we thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thoroughly enjoyed our week here with you. Oh, it's I, been great. I've enjoyed it too. <laughs>